dear friends dear brothers and sisters dear distinguished professors and deans here we are all seekers we are sailing in the same boat the boat that carries us to the golden shore of the beyond nothing gives me a greater sense of satisfaction than to be of dedicated service to the seekers for i am also a seeker an eternal seeker a seeker of the infinite truth and light as you know i am advised by me esteemed friend dean foster to speak on the meaning of discipleship today this is the most significant subject and therefore i offer him my gratitude heart now who is a disciple a disciple is a seeker a truth seeker who is a disciple a disciple is a lover he is a heaven lover who is a disciple a disciple is a server he is an earth server who is a disciple a disciple is a fulfiller is a god fulfiller the meaning of discipleship today now if you want to know the meaning of discipleship we have to focus our concentrated attention on the role of a disciple the role of a disciple is quite simple of course if we follow the path of the heart and not that of the mind the role of the seeker is to give what he has and what he is what he has is an inner cry this cry is birthless and deathless he offers this birthless and deathless inner cry to his pilot supreme for his infinite light eternal peace and immortal bliss no. what he is he is a devoted and soulful instrument he wants to help mankind see the beauty of the infinite in the very heart of the finite he wants to unite earth's helpless cry helpless cry and heaven's endless smile he takes it as its bounden duty to serve both mother earth and father heaven he undoubtedly he is a chosen instrument 
of the Absolute Pilot Supreme, here to manifest the eternal truth is this constant cry, constant hunger. Yesterday's disciple, today's disciple, and tomorrow's disciple. Yesterday's disciple was simple and humble. Simplicity was his outer life, humility was his inner life. Simplicity and humility inundated his entire being. Today's disciple is complicated and argumentative. Complication and argumentation reign supreme in his life, day in and day out. Tomorrow's disciple will be the fastest spiritual runner. His code of life will be to run and become and become and run. He'll run in order to succeed. He'll become in order to proceed. At times he will run and reach the goal. At times the goal will come to him. When he reaches the goal, he will be blessed with the transcendental pride of the Absolute Supreme. And when the goal reaches him, he will immediately sit at the feet of the Absolute Supreme with his heart's soulful gratitude see. In days of your the disciple was advised and encouraged by the Master to renounce the world Enunciation was taught right from the beginning when the seeker, the disciple, came to the Master. The Vedic seers of the holy past and also the Upanishadic seers offered a supreme message to the world at large Renounce through enunciation, enjoy through enunciation, teno tyakteno bhunjita. Everybody wants to enjoy, for satisfaction is a paramount need. Now they came to realize that satisfaction can be achieved only through renunciation. There is no other way. This world of ours gives us things that do not last. Their life breath is very short. Sooner than the soonest, everything dies. So they taught their disciples not to run after material objects. Everything here is an illusion. Nothing can last and nothing will last permanently. What is the use of running after things that will not last for good? So, the students were taught the message of renunciation. 
Then there came a time when the message needed some transformation. 20th century and a few centuries before, the sages, the seers, the spiritual masters have come to realize that acceptance of life is of paramount importance, not rejection. If we renounce the world, if we renounce the body, vital, mind and heart, then what are you going to do for our beloved Supreme? We say we love God, we say we want to please Him. If you want to please Him, if you want to fulfill Him, how can we reject or renounce the world? This world of ours, as it is, must be accepted. First we accept, then we transform. Needless to say, this world is far, far from perfection. But unless and until we accept the world, we touch the earth arena, we touch the sufferings, the pains, the imperfections of the world at large, how are you going to change the face and fate of the world? Therefore, we must needs accept the world. Our mind is full of doubts, worries and anxieties and so forth. Our mind has to be transformed. Our vital quite often is destructive. We have to have a new vital which is dynamic. With a dynamic vital, we will be able to run the fastest dive the deepest and fly the highest. Our body is lethargic. Our body enjoys ignorant sleep. It has been sleeping for millions of years, yet it wants to enjoy this ignorant sleep. Now, the seeker in us tells our body, to wake up. Again, the Upanishadic seers taught us how to inspire the body with inner dynamism only by repeating the soulful and powerful words of incantation. Uttishtata Jagrata Arise Awake until the goal is reached, do not stop. And this goal is for whom? Not for the weakling. Nayamatma bala hineno lagga. The inner goal can be achieved only by the powerful souls, not for the weakling. The goal, the goal that is satisfies our inner world and the outer world, the goal that quenches our eternity's thirst. Today's disciple cannot satisfy us. Yesterday's disciple could not satisfy us. Tomorrow's disciple also perhaps will not satisfy us. Why? Yesterday's disciple said to the Master, Master, give me the capacity. If you bless me with capacity, I shall please you. Now, the Seeker, the disciple, did not want to go further. He did not tell the Master that he would be more than willing to please the Master in his own way. Today's disciple says to the Master, Master, 
I am giving you a golden chance. Do please me first in my own way. I give you my word of honor. Tomorrow I shall please you in your own way. But you have to please me first. And I have already given you a golden supreme chance. Tomorrow's disciple, perhaps you will say to the Master, Master, let us please each other. You give me something significant and I shall give you something significant. I shall give you my life's sleepless service. You give me your soul's Himalayan realization. Here also the disciple has managed to forget the message of unconditional reality. All conditional. Master has to give something to the disciple, then only the disciple will give the master something else. Therefore, yesterday's disciple could not fulfill the supreme task. Today's disciple cannot and tomorrow's also fail. But in the distant future, it may take millions of years, there shall come a time when the secret disciple will be ready to please the master in his own way. The secret disciple will be able to identify himself with the supreme prayer message of the Savior, supreme Christ, Father, that thy will be done. Here, the message of surrender comes to the fore. Unfortunately, the present day world is scared to death when it hears the word surrender. Now, in the spiritual life, the surrender that we speak of is not the surrender of the African slave of the past to their masters. It is the recognition of the infinite by the finite. A tiny drop recognizes its inner identity with the vast ocean and it enters into the ocean and becomes the vast infinite ocean self. Here in the spiritual life nobody is compelled to surrender. But everybody has an inner urge to grow into the infinite. As the tiny drop grows into the infinite, even so the finite consciousness of ours can eventually grow into infinity. Surrender and freedom are always at daggers drawn. But if we dive deep within, we feel there is no difference between the two terms, between the two concepts, between the two so-called realities. They are this obverse and reverse of the same coin. Before you accepted the spiritual life, We enjoyed freedom in a special way. We fulfilled or wanted to fulfill our earthbound desires. We felt perhaps we had the capacity and potentiality 
to be another Napoleon or Alexander the Great or Julius Caesar to voice forth I came, I saw and I conquered. This is at least the positive way of looking at the reality. Otherwise, if it is a negative way, then we would have cherished and admired deep in the inmost recesses of our heart the destructive message of Hitler and Stalin. Now, we entered into the spiritual life. The desire-bound life we gave up. We enjoyed freedom. Whether it's freedom or not, we enjoyed something in a limited way. And the after effect of it was total frustration. Therefore, we needed a kind of escape. Or we can say illumination dawned on us. Therefore, we entered into spiritual life. Here, unfortunately, we feel that we are surrendering to somebody else. We have no freedom of ours. But I used to say, freedom is always there. You have only changed the course of the game. Previously, you wanted to fulfill yourself. By fulfilling the desired life, now you want to fulfill yourself. Please yourself by fulfilling the aspiration life. Here, nobody compels or can compel a secret disciple to follow a spiritual path or to listen to the advice of a master. He comes to the master on the strength of his inner urge. Then he sees himself as an exact prototype of his master's divine consciousness. He, he knew perfectly well that once upon a time he enjoyed freedom in his own way. Now also he is exercising his freedom in a different way. When we lead, we enjoy freedom. Again, when we consciously, soulfully, deliberately and unconditionally follow, we enjoy another kind of freedom. So here, his inner awareness inner development, inner sense of truth compel him to follow a higher life, a more illumining life, a more fulfilling life. Therefore, the question of surrender does not arise at all. Only a new kind of freedom he enjoys. He is enjoying a new kind of freedom. He follows his own higher reality. He knows that the Master knows a little more than he does, so therefore he is following the Master's. It is a new freedom. He does not have to kiss the dust of his Master's feet. He knows he and his mother, master are inseparable one and here on his own to fulfill his own divine longing he is staying with the master and he knows perfectly well there is only one master and that master is the absolute supreme and his physical, the master who is in the physical form, is only a representative of his real guru, the real master. In the spiritual life, 
God for God's sake, right from the beginning, if this message a seeker can embody, can reveal and manifest at every moment in his life, then only he can be a perfect choice and supreme instrument of the beloved, supreme. There shall come a time when our Mother Earth will be inundated with the secret disciples. who will carry the banner of unconditional surrender, which is nothing other than conscious and constant, inseparable and unconditional divine oneness with one's master. <laughs>